Hi, I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to take on the rather daunting task of explaining to you Evernote. Now why is it daunting? That's because Evernote is so many things to so many people. In a nutshell, Evernote is a note-taking application. With Evernote, we take notes on any of our devices, on our computer, on our handheld phone, on our iPad or tablet, and we store those notes in the cloud uh, in our Evernote account. We have little notebooks in our Evernote account that allows us to add some structure. We add keywords that allow us to search on the notes when they're in Evernote. And that's the basis of Evernote. What's so exciting about it? Well, what's so exciting about it is the definition of what is a note. A note's not just text. Oh, no, no, no. A note in Evernote can be a photo that we've taken with our smartphone. It can be an image that we've taken from a photo library. It can be a clipping of a web page. It can be a document. It can be a PDF document or a word processing document. It can be an audio clip that we've recorded. It could be a lecture that we've just listened to and recorded with our smartphone. Any of these can be notes. And each of these notes then live in the, on, in the internet, on, in, in the cloud, and then we can access them on any of our devices. It gets very exciting. And as you start to use Evernote more and more, you begin to rely on it more and more, you begin to trust it more and more, and it becomes a repository for all those little bits of data that are rattling around in our head and so easy to forget and lose. And occasionally they're there, occasionally they're not. With Evernote, they're there and we can access them. That's what makes it exciting. So now I want to show you how it works. And again, I kind of struggled just trying to figure out, oh, how should I demonstrate this? And I thought about showing you the app because we actually can download and install an Evernote app, which I have done and we will use. And that's kind of your command central for using Evernote. But you don't spend most of the time in the app. Instead, Evernote kind of flows into all of your daily activities. I'll show you how it works from that perspective. Typically speaking in the day, you might be browsing to a website and find an article or find a little bit of text that you're interested in saving and retaining for some reason. We've all come up with different strategies for saving and retaining that information. Uh, here, maybe this is a little bit of an article here that I want to keep. I could highlight it. I could copy and paste this into Google Docs if I wanted, and we all know how well that works. And I can find, I, I could bookmark this site certainly, and then I can try and remember what site it was in the bookmark and organize my folders and try and get back to it. But that's not really going to work either. Instead, I'm going to use Evernote. And in this case here, because I'm in my web browser and I've got a little bit of data that I want to save from the internet, I'm going to use my web browser plugin that I installed from Evernote. Now here, it's called the Evernote Web Clipper. I can choose which notebook I want to save it into because I have some structure to my notebooks, uh, some order within Evernote. I'll just save it in Steve Dotto's notebook. I can add tags. This is important stuff. Stuff. There we go. And then I can choose to either save the selection, save the full article, save the full page, or just save the URL. This is great if you want to just save, a, if, if there are cool little websites that you, that you just want to remember, but you, you know, you're not going to return and visit and they aren't appropriate for bookmarking. It's a great way for saving them. And the cool thing is because it's all on the web, it's all web 2.0 you can then access that URL from any of your devices. So when you're out to dinner with friends and you say, hey, there's this great website, you don't have to go back to your computer, find it in the bookmarks if you can find it. No, you can just find it right there on your smartphone. In this case though, let's just save selection, click save, and it then takes this selection, it clips it, and then it stores it online for us. Now let's open the Evernote app and see what, we, what we've done. In the Evernote app, I can see right away the document or the note that I just saved. Here it is, the, uh, the, all of the text and the graphic that was on that web page along with the tag important stuff here in my Evernote interface. But let's take a look through the overall application here just to get a feel for the structure of it. Left-hand side here are all of my notebooks. These are the, the kind of the, the major organizational tools within Evernote. You create new notebooks and you store relevant data in those notebooks. And some people will have dozens or hundreds of notebooks. It doesn't matter how many notebooks you have because you can always quickly search and find things by keywords or by tagging. So it's so keep as much information as you want. You can't have too much in Evernote. At least I don't think you can have too much information in Evernote. So here's all of our basic structure of my notebooks that I have set up here. Down the center, I can see my actual notes. And if I go into any of my notes, uh, any of my notebooks, in my cooking notebook, I can see I just have one, one recipe in my notebooks. 
and I can see all of my notebooks here, which will give me all of my notes. Steve Dotto's notebook, where I just stored that image that we just looked at here, I can organize and go through them all this way. I can also, let me just go into all my notes, quickly get to any document, and let's actually move away from the one that we just had so that you can find it, so that I can go back to it. There we go. If I start ty typing in important, you see there, it, it automatically finds the note with important stuff and all of the other ones that I've keyed or I've tagged as important. So you can see it's very quick to search and find data as you go along. Along the very top, we have account management tools. We have, of course, a series of different menu items that just basically allow simple management. But most of your time is spent here in the screen searching through area or retrieving information in Evernote. Now, down the bottom, you can also see there's an ad. This is a perfect time for me to talk about the different versions of Evernote, of which there are two. There's the free version, which I'm using right now, and I see no reason for you not to use for quite some time. It's very robust. It's got almost all of the features of the paid version. The difference between the free and the paid version is the free version, you get those irritating ads. You also get a limited amount of storage, which is actually quite a bit of storage. But if you're saving a lot of audio files, that sort of stuff, you will run out of space fairly quickly on it. Uh, but if you're just saving graphics and text, it's plenty of storage. And there's also some indexing features in the paid version where it will quickly, it will uh, basically OCR your documents much faster. Even in the free version, uh, Evernote does a great job of optical, doing optical character recognition on graphics, on PDF documents to help you find and search within those documents. But in the full version, it does, it, it makes it a priority and it indexes them very fast and very effectively. So it makes it even better for finding documents. Because a lot of people don't just clip notes like this, but they store documents in there. A lot of people store their email, their important emails are stored in Evernote. And if you're starting to do all those sorts of things, again, the paid version becomes a lot more appealing because suddenly you're storing a lot more data in Evernote. That's the app itself. I think what I'd like to do now is I'd like to take you into the mobility world. Let's, let's, let's fire up my iPad and have a look. I've got my iPad fired up so that we can all see it. And we see the now familiar icon of the elephant. The elephant never forgets. That is Evernote. When I open it up, we're brought in to my Evernote account on my iPad here. Now it will look slightly different on your iPod touch or on your iPhone or on your Android device based on the geometry of the screen. But the same functionality is going to be available to us in all of those different Evernote clients. The note that we just took, that we just captured, if I take a look, there it is. We can see it's available to us. And this, in its simplicity, shows us how powerful Evernote is. We just clipped information from, our, from a web browser on our computer, and we're now viewing that in an indexed form on our iPad or on our mobility device. That shows us how elegant and how effective Evernote can be. Now, as you start to use Evernote, how you as you fold it into your life, it'll become kind of organic as you use it. You're not gonna just capture information on your computer and then view it on your mobility devices. You will capture information on all of your devices and share them, and it, it, it'll just kind of become ubiquitous through your, through, your entire, through your entire day. So let me show you creating a new note now on my iPad. When I go to create new note, I'm given a series of icons along the top. I can create an audio note. This is great for students that want to record a lecture, or if you're the sort of person that wants to do voice memos, you can create a voice memo. Of course, you can still tag it with text and you can so that you can find it a little bit later and listen to it on any of your devices. You can also choose a photo that's on your photo library within your, within your device. And with the camera icon, we can then enable that and then we can take a picture. I'm not going to take a picture in here because there's nothing to see in here right now, but we can take a picture and then tag that as our note. Now, I use that to tremendous effect in a couple of different ways. One, when I have business lunches or dinners now, instead of stuffing receipts in my wallet, I take a photo of the picture, I take a photo of the receipt with my iPhone, tag who the person is that I'm out to dinner with, that is if I'm paying, and then when I get back to my office, I've got, I can just go into Evernote, call up the receipt, drag it into my email and send it off to my account. Very effective. And again, it's stored so that I can go back anytime and recapture it. At that same dinner, if we happen to have a great bottle of wine, I take a picture of the label because I can never remember the names of bottles of, wine, of good wines when I'm at the liquor store. So I always buy the exact same thing because I can never remember what it was that I was good that I had at XYZ restaurant. I can, I can tag that information in the liquor store, call up my iPhone, take a quick look, find the bottle, 
and then we can have better wine when we're going out to visit friends. It works great. I want to show you a few of the other features that are in here as well. And one of them is I want to go in to, back to the home screen, that's where I want to go, and I want to take touch on the more. This is cool. Evernote also respects and recognizes what's in your calendar and where you are as it makes your notes. So for example, I was at my daughter's concert today and it was in my, at her, at her school concert, and it was in my calendar that I was at the concert. So when I made a quick little Evernote note at the concert, and it was nothing, I just made a note that Evernote takes into account calendar details. When I did that there, it actually says note from Emma's concert in Delta. That's because it took that information from my calendar, the concert, and my location that I was in Delta, and it put them into the notes so that I can search not just on keywords, but on my calendar events or on my physical location. And it shows you on a map where the notes that you captured were taken. It just, it just kind of adds that much extra richness to the overall experience. You know, I could go on for hours and hours and hours about some of the different things that we can do with Evernote. Well, maybe not hours, but I could go on for minutes more. And I think we've reached the, we've reached kind of the limits of what we should be doing on a, on a, on a, on a, on a video cast like this. So I'm going to call a halt to it right now, but we are going to do more videos on using Evernote for productivity. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's been useful to you, drop by our website at dototech.com. We've got lots more videos there and we look for your recommendations on any videos that aren't there that you might like to see there. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending this time with us today.